Hello and welcome to Lightcast Webinars. We're really excited today to be presenting this webinar in partnership with our colleagues at Nav Nav Navigator. Sorry. Um, if you have any questions during the course of this webinar, please put them in the um, control panel on your GoToWebinar control panel on the side, and then we'll endeavour to get back to those at the end of the presentation. But we will be sharing the recording and slides from today's webinar in a follow-up email, so keep your eyes open for that. So without any further ado, I'd like to hand over to Lightcast's Will Cookson. Thanks, Debbie. Um, apologies to everyone for the slight delay in getting going. Um, obviously, there's lots of technology involved in running a webinar, which can slow things down. Um, wanted to just uh, welcome you all to today's webinar. Really excited about it. Um, we've been doing a lot of work in the background with Navigator for many years, and it's great to be able to showcase and share the way in which the partnership has developed. And um, most excitingly of all, the work that they're doing around digital badges. Um, I will do introductions as we go through the first few slides. Um, but as you can see, we will be joined by Tim Richards, Tim Riches, even sorry, the executive director at Navigator, and uh, Omid Mafid, who is the chief technology officer. And they'll be sharing their um, product, their work, and their thoughts around digital badging and how it can benefit uh, communities. I need to do the obligatory welcome to Lightcast. Anyone that's joined us before should know who we are. For anyone that hasn't um, attended one of our webinars before, welcome. Um, essentially, um, our mission is to unlock new possibilities in the labour market. Um, which makes today's webinar really uh, exciting because we are breaking into new ground in regards to how we bring skills data and um, data about the or real time data on the labour market alongside digital badges. We work um, as Lightcast with learning providers, uh, universities, colleges, local and central government, and uh, also with businesses to help them better understand the world of work and the fast changing labour market. In the next slide, I'm not going to restate everything that I've just said about Lightcast, um, but I wanted to use this point to describe the partnership. Um, we've um, known um, of Navigator, I think it goes back to 2020, and we first became aware of them through uh, work that we were both doing um, in Plymouth with Plymouth City Council. And um, really, the it became quite apparent quite quickly that there was a common ground around skills. Um, and there was a mutual understanding of the importance of skills. And immediately we started to focus in on areas that we would be able to collaborate on. Um, obviously, um, skills being absolutely key to this and digital badging being absolutely key to the work that Navigator do, we found that sweet spot in regards to where we both thought that we could bring something very interesting to the partnership. At this point, I think it'd be really good for me to introduce uh, Tim and let him, to, let him introduce Navigator. Tim, are you there? I am, Will, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, we've been really looking forward to this day, actually for about a year and a half now. And that's uh, when we met like Cast, and as Will said, we started to discuss the potential of connecting digital badging with Lightcast data, those two sort of separate data sources, which, which, which aren't really connected um, um, in the badging world. So Lightcast, of course, provides deep insights on skills needs in localities. Uh, Navigator provides a rich data set of skills um, that people develop and their progression uh, towards work as well. So we started off by doing some research together, um, looking at uh, a person or a persona of a worker from Southampton. Um, Will, if you could go to the next slide, please. So um, this is during the, the pandemic. Um, it was when the, the retail sector had been really decimated. 
uh, which we'll all remember, and the council were thinking about ways in which they could help residents transition into more stable careers. So this is the, the persona that we designed. So this is Claire, she's been made redundant from Primark. Um, she has some photography skills. She has uh, obviously retail skills from working in Primark. Um, and she's got some um, experience, uh, retail online experience, if you like, uh, from a side hustle that she's doing with Depop. So theoretically, then, if you combine all of the skills that she's developed, both in the workplace, but also as part of this side hustle, um, the theory was we could combine those and then help her um, um, progress along a pathway and then apply for a job in e-commerce. So that was the theory. Uh, next slide, please. And then our friends at Lightcast then started to look at, you know, would this really work in practice? So um, Lightcast looked at the skills that were needed for e-commerce jobs. So it's selling, uh, it's, it's Photoshop skills, or photo editing skills, it's some customer experience. So the theory is then that the experience she's had from work and also in her informal learning experience as well could lead to that pathway um, career into e-commerce. E um, and interestingly, if you look at the right side of the graph here, you see that there's a demand for that skill as well. And this is, the data is actually from Southampton, so, so we worked on this partnership with Southampton. And um, so we could see that there was a demand for jobs in the area. So this research really kind of cemented the idea that if we connected labour market data with badging data, we could help people see how their skills connected. Uh, the badges connected to opportunities to work, which really help aspirations. And actually, you know, when we talk to people around badging and people who receive badges um, as in different cities, they always say to us, you know, what's the connection between receiving a badge and, and my career? You know, will it help me move into work? So the second potential we really saw is that um, educators, when they're designing skills programs, they need to know whether their vocational courses particularly um, are going to meet the needs of the labour market. So giving them that data that connects to the labour market is really important when they're designing the credentials. And the third thing that we saw um, for the potential for was for employers to be able to see candidates based on their skills. So move towards a kind of more skills-based hiring approach. Um, so two local authorities really saw the potential for this technology with Southampton and Cambridge, and we've recently been joined, um, excited to be joined by Belfast as well. Uh, and they saw the potential of combining LMI uh, with Lightcast with badging so that they could identify skills needs, address them with badges um, so that they can make sure that local residents get access to new, new opportunities and they can actually demonstrate that through, through data. I uh, just want to talk a little bit about um, the reasons why we think this is a fantastic time to launch this particular innovation. And the first is around adoption. So digital badges, um, most of you I think will, will know about them who are on the call today, um, but they're used by some real top uh, brands now and some sort of really recognisable brands. So City and Guilds, for example, in the UK and internationally, Open University again, UK and internationally, uh, Pearson's, IBM, Microsoft, and, and many thousands of organizations, um, universities, and employers using them worldwide. And around 75 million badges were, were issued last year. So we're seeing that growth and adoption. And that's important because it signals to other organizations um, that now is a good time, it's a trusted standard, an international standard for recognizing skills, and these big organizations are involved. So if you are delivering learning, then really it should be recognized in a portable international skill standards like uh, open badges. Um, so there's adoption internationally. And then next slide, please. Also adoption locally as well. So not least the Cities of Learning program, uh, which Navigators are a partner with, which is mapping, recognizing and connecting learning across the UK and Ireland. Uh, supported by the Royal Society of the Arts, uh, our partner Badge Nation, who Quality Assures Badges, navigate a platform as well. So uh, there's a whole range of cities beginning to use badges uh, as a kind of community and, and grassroots bottom up effort as well. So those two things I think are starting to come together. Um, so the second thing I just want to shine a light on is the is really the um, uh, development of, of big data. Go to the next slide, um, Will. 
So um, when we first started building tools so people could design and launch badges, um, all of this work to develop a badge, um, so just for those of you who aren't familiar with badges, so the badge is an image file here, um, which shows what skill has been recognized, and then there's all of this data that goes behind it. Um, so there's information on what's been learned, the criteria, the learning outcomes, um, the endorsement, etc. But it's very difficult if you are writing a badge to get these, these skills right, and these skills are really, really critical. So because the labour market uh, is advancing really quickly, you can't really rely, next slide please, well, um, on individual uh, knowledge um, uh, to, to be able to get those, those skills right. So traditional government uh, data, structural data, just simply doesn't cut it. Many occupations are just missing from the data, for example. It's a bit like qualifications trying to uh, keep up with the jobs market. And this is where big data really comes into play. So by integrating the like cast, it allows us to allows us to really sort of rewrite the rule book a bit in terms of writing uh, badges. Um, so you're not writing badges in isolation and just relying on your own knowledge. You're able to use a common language for skills, which has been used um, by employers and has been created um, through those the big data and machine learning. Um, so we've created a set of tools um, which helps people align their badges with the, the labour market, um, which uh, Omid will show you in a minute. And there's just one thing I wanted to shine a light on finally. The third thing was the, the, the current labour market conditions. Next slide, please, Will. And there are three factors affecting the kind of squeeze on the labour market. So there's a shortage of skills at the moment. Um, will will be able to talk more eloquently to this. But there are three sort of headlines. There's an aging population. Um, there was the, the retirement that happened um, during Brexit. Um, and of course, Brexit itself means that we can't access a skilled labor from the EU and we've got low levels of employment as well. So all of these factors mean that employers are more open to exploring new skills-based approaches to hiring. So in summary, and I think there are sort of three conditions that, that make this innovation really important at the moment. There's the adoption of open badges, there's the maturity of big data in relation to jobs data, um, and there's the squeeze on the labour market as well. So even though we've got an enormous amount of uh, adoption going on, 75 million badges issued last year, We've identified a number of different shortcomings around existing open badge technology. First is there's no easy way to find and discover badges. There's no easy way to connect them into pathways. Uh, we're still using email issuing, which is a tried and trusted technique, but we think we need to go much broader than that to capture the depth of learning happening across communities. And there's no easy way to see analytics as well. So that's why we developed the Navigator platform to address some of these issues. Next one, please, Will. So three innovations that we've brought to market recently. Um, we want to concentrate on the third one connected today, but just very quickly, we've put uh, location information into badge data. And that means that um, residents can find badges which are relevant to them, which are available in their local community. Because sometimes you see badges put on social media feeds, on LinkedIn, etc. You click on it and it looks like a great badge, but you, you the coding club, let's say that, that's what it's about, um, that it advertises, it might be only available in California rather than Coventry. So, you know, you don't know whether you can actually access it. So we put location information and activity information, and then we started to personalize the search results as well within that discover page, which, which um, Omid will show you. Um, the second is around making learning more visible. Um, as I was saying, so email issuing is great, but you know if you're issuing badges to people on the construction site, you can't take your computer with you. Um, so we've introduced issuing to individual um, individuals QR codes, so that can be done instantly. And we hear uh, regularly from learners that they want that recognition instantly. They don't want to wait for for email. And then the third and thing we're going to concentrate on today is connecting badges to job opportunities. Um, and last month we introduced a new innovation around smart skills tagging. So when you're writing badges and pathways, um, you can extract smart skills tags, which are based on like cast data. Um, and today um, we're really excited to show you Navigator Jobs, which connects the badges together into pathways and starts to lead people 
um, to different job opportunities. And with that, I am going to pass on to Omid Mafid, who is our CTO, who is going to talk to you um, about the technology and explain some of the benefits for learners, educators, employers, and local authorities. So over to you, Omid. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. That's great. Oh. Uh, well, yeah, if you don't mind, you can you can you can continue with the slide decks and then make your presenter again. Apologies, I was a bit previous there. Um, Tim, no you should be back in the driving seat. Uh, can we make a uh, Bill presenter? Yeah. Hold on one sec. Okay, cool. That's, that's more like it. You can see why we had a slight delay at the start. Cool. There we go. That's, uh, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, hi, and um, thank you for joining this webinar. Um, yeah, uh, just picking up where, where Tim left. Um, uh, in, in the past, in, in the past few decades, the uh, the way learning happens, that lifelong uh, learning journey, has significantly changed. How we do our jobs now is very different from how we did it in the past, and it changes every every few years. For example, how we book a meeting now is very different from how it was done only five or ten years ago. And in, in the next five and ten years, it will change, and especially with the emergence of tools such as Chat GPT, that pace of change is going to uh, uh, only pick up. And this constant change demands that we continuously learn and then unlearn and then relearn new ways of doing our job. And it, this, is, this, is a, this creates a, a set of new challenges. And uh, another change that has happened in the past few decades is, is in the past, learning content was scarce. It was not widely available, whereas now, any information is only a few clicks away, um, but this um, this wide availability of um, of information uh, brings new challenges. And in in finding the right information, the trusted trustworthy information at at the right time. And um, as navigator, our our mission is to play our part at, at tackling exactly that challenge. And as as Tim mentioned before, open badges have been around for for several years now. They are well adopted. But, but we now brought a new approach to how you create badges, how you engage with those badges, and we have added, um, enriched that offer by adding, uh, connecting it to pathways and, and links to jobs. And also we are using Lightcast Skills Taxonomy to create a common thread between badges, between pathways, between jobs, and the, and the learner's experience so that we can create a a cohesive learning experience and this innovation that we will showcase today the jobs feed is it was uh, it was built in um, collaboration and with support and funding from Cambridge City Council and Southampton City Council uh, and and we, we talked about those challenges and the challenges come in different shapes depending on the audience so in case of the local authorities for example the challenge for a local authority is to to, to have a clear view of the learning um, available in their community and the opportunities available in their communities and being able to identify gaps and, um, and, and trends in their community and also making informed and data-driven decisions at the right time to drive change in their, in their communities and creating this consistent data set that can be trusted um, it requires to use a shared language we worked with uh, Lightcast and uh, local authorities to, to develop the, the tools to help local authorities uh, tackle these challenges. For example, in, in case of Cambridge, um, it is important for Cambridge to measure the impact of learning they make for, uh, uh, for different demographics, and including people with um, additional physical or, uh, or learning needs. So um, now moving on from learning authorities to uh, next slide, please, to to organisations, to organisations in in, a com in those communities, for example, the learning providers, training providers, employers, uh, and and so on. Um, for these organisations, the challenge is is comes in a different shape. So it is recognising learners' achievements and finding the right uh, the right people with the right skills 
and creating the opportunities to attract these, uh, these people with the right skills. And it's also important uh, for these organizations to have the confidence that their, their training program, their content aligns with the demand for skills and it aligns with the labor market in their, in their local area. And finally, it's very important, it's, very, it's, it's crucial for them to be able to measure and demonstrate the impact they make in their, in their local area. So, and we focus our, our, um, our tool development for, uh, for organizations in those, in those key areas. And um, moving on from that to, uh, to learners' experience, for the, le for the learners, um, um, the challenges are slightly different. For example, the challenges include, um, uh, include being able to discover opportunities that help them take the next step towards their goals, towards their life goals, whether it is uh, getting a job, whether it is improving their well-being, whatever their, 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 uh, their next step is. And um, nowadays, technologies such as YouTube, Netflix, or Amazon, they can tell you what to buy next or what to watch next. But why can't technology tell us what to learn next? Surely that's more important. And we also know uh, that learning has a very tangible positive impact on people's outcomes, such as improving career aspirations. Um, a research done by the Cambridge City Council indicated that 75% of young people who engage with extracurricular uh, learning activities are less likely to become neat and they are 50% less likely to develop mental uh, ill health. And again, going back to the challenges uh, for a learner, another challenge for, a le for the learners is the recognition of their existing skills and showcasing their existing skills. And this challenge is one that I personally re uh, relate to. Uh, throughout my life, I've, I've had to, uh, several times I've had to move countries, uh, speaking different languages, and each time I had to start fresh. I had to start from scratch and reprove myself, reprove the skills I have, reprove, reprove what I know. When I, because when I moved, I couldn't, I couldn't bring most of my quali qualifications because maybe they were in a different language or maybe they didn't match with the uh, qualification standards in the new, in, in the new destination. So it, it, it would have been great if I could, if I could showcase my skills and my knowledge in a trusted format, in a uh, transportable format that I could, I could move, I could take with myself, and I, I letting my, my my skills talk for themselves. And if I could also explore the opportunities in the new destination when I land, without having to build the new network and know the right people to um, to learn about the new opportunities, and and that's what motivates us to do what we do, to do this work, to tackle these challenges for these for these people. And this can be possible with the help of uh, developments, as, as Tim mentioned, the developments in big data, the, the machine learning, AI, and the new standards around technology, such as the Open Badge Standard and the Common Skills Frameworks. And the timing is right as well to tackle these challenges, as, as Tim mentioned, mentioned. Most of the time, uh, the timing is the key factor in, in defining the success of an innovation. So why is the timing right? Developments in technology now makes it possible to do more at scale and also in this post-pandemic world the way we do work and uh, the, the, the way we learn has significantly changed and created the, the, the demand for this change and the labor market has also changed it's, it, there's a it's a weird environment in the labor market where on one side there's a there's a, a, a shortage of jobs and then on the other side there's a shortage of uh, skilled workers so there's a misalignment and a uh, by using these uh, uh, the right tools, we can we can align that uh, that unbalance. And there's also huge development in in automation and AI, and this is creating a, a big uh, threat for 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 jobs. So that is going to create a demand for that change. And there's also a rise in immigration and dislocated populations, creating another another um, uh, another lane of another uh, stream of demand. And this demand is only going to get higher, and the technology is, is ready at scale. So this is the right time for the for the uh, big players in education to make the right um, to make to make to create the right environment and the, the trigger to, to trigger change. So today we will look at how uh, Belfast City Council are um, uh, are uh, are using these technologies to recognize skills development as part of uh, an employability program. 
And without further ado, I'll jump on to show you the, the platform. I will, if you don't mind, uh, uh, putting me in the driver's seat. Thank you. Uh, I hope you can see my screen now. Um, cool. So this is uh, this is Navigator. Uh, Navigator is navigator.app. We have been talking about this uh, discoverability and making making opportunities uh, discoverable. So let's let's start with a with a story. Uh, let's assume I'm I'm 19 years old, 20 years old, and uh, I'm looking for my first for my first job in let's say technology. If I can type it, in uh, uh, I'm looking for a technology opportunity in Leeds. As you can see, it uh, right away it brings up some pathways and some badges that uh, align with uh, with what I'm looking for. So there are six opportunities for technology within 10 miles of Leeds. I can I can further um, tweak uh, and customize my my search. Uh, at the moment, I'm interested in uh, opportunities that create an outcome uh, towards a job. Uh, I'd like it to show me activities, badges, pathways, communities, and providers. 10 miles, actually, I want to um, uh, spread it a little bit wider. Let's make it 50 miles. And I'd like to see opportunities that I can join either in person or online. And I'd like to access opportunities which are open to all. Some, oppor some opportunities can have some restrictions. For example, they might be available only to the students of a certain university or employees of a, a, a company. So at the moment, I'm, I'm searching for um, opportunities which are open to everybody. So here, um, now it's, it's narrowed, out, narrowed down my, my search. And I, um, uh, this is a technology uh, pathway uh, developed by Belfast City Council. Uh, it leads to a job. And um, this is this is uh, this is the way a pathway looks. Uh, so briefly, a uh, description of what that pathway is about. And we have been talking about skills and alignment with the Lightcast skills. So this is where uh, that comes into play. So this pathway, by completing this pathway, I will learn. I will. I will. Um, I will learn these. I will learn these skills. And each of these skills are smart tags. So they have a rich metadata in the, um, behind them. For example, this is a pathway about uh, learning SQL uh, uh, database programming language. You can click into one of those skills and it will take me back into the Discover page with a description of what that skill is about and then other opportunities which are available. I'll just jump back into, into that pathway and uh, uh, scrolling down more. Um, so these are the, uh, there are uh, several steps in, in this pathway to complete. Each of the steps um, linked to linked to a badge. Um, uh, I'll get into the I'll get to these steps in in a, in a minute. But for now, let's jump scroll down a little bit to the to the start of show today. So if I scroll down, um, this is this is the start of the show related job. So um, when I'm looking at a pathway, I can see what who is uh, who is offering that pathway. As I, uh, the trust behind that, I can see the steps involved in that, and I can see the skills I will gain by, by, by taking part in that pathway. And I also can see what jobs I can potentially, um, um, I can potentially uh, um, uh, get by completing that pathway. So here, um, uh, this is the job title, the company offering the job, uh, uh, the salary, it's a full-time job, it can be done remote, and it's based in Belfast. This job was. This is where we gathered the job data from uh, from Lightcast. So this uh, and Lightcast collects, aggregates that data from different sources. This job was originally posted on this website about 17 days ago, and I can see more. Uh, there are more options uh, jobs. So there are five five jobs in this list, and um, I can I can click on one of these jobs, and it will take me to the to the page where I can. Uh, read more about the job and apply for the job if, it, if I'm still interested in that job. And just coming back to this page, to this, um, uh, the job feed. So this job feed, on the first um, look, it, it looks very similar to uh, the way jobs are listed in, on, any, on any other jobs website. But um, there, is, um, there, is more to, there is more to this than it looks from the um, uh, first. So this job, these jobs are highly customized and personalized to the content I'm looking at. So, these include um, 
it, all of these jobs are related to these skills. They are in this industry and uh, they align with the level that this pathway is about. So this is an entry level pathway and the jobs are um, related to entry level uh, positions in, in technology. And this, this list is also customized to my profile. I'm logged in as, um, as myself in here. And um, uh, I have I've set my preferences. I've told the platform who am I, what my skills are, what my aspirations are. And based on that, it has customized its, this list for me. For example, I've, I've told the system that I'm after, uh, um, I'm looking for a full-time job or a part-time job. In this quick filter, I can quickly switch that. Uh, so I'm uh, uh, applying to display only the full-time jobs or displaying only the part-time jobs. And in the, in the location filter, uh, in my preferences, I've, I've defined, I've said that um, I've, I'm planning to move to Belfast. Um, and um, so that's why uh, by default, it personalizes the job feed uh, and shows the jobs in, in Belfast, shows me the jobs in Belfast. But I can always uh, filter that to show jobs in, in, my, in my current location in Leeds. Um, or I can filter that to see jobs from anywhere. And I can, uh, in this next filter, I've set myself in my preferences that I'm looking for a hybrid job. I can filter that to see remote jobs or jobs, office-based jobs as well. And I'm, I'm now looking, right now I'm looking for any type of job. But if I'm specifically looking for apprenticeships, internships, or voluntary jobs, I can filter it down to, to that level as well. And I've been talking about this, um, uh, uh, my, my career preferences. When I'm looking at this screen, so the, the, next, uh, the next part is um, I, can, I can tweak my preferences right away from here to uh, if I'm not happy with the way that jobs are displaying, I can click into that. And this takes me to my career aspirations page, um, which is part of my uh, profile settings. Um, uh, in my profile settings, I can do all, all of the common things, my account preferences, changing my email, my password, my name, um, accessing my GDPR um, rights and all of that. But it, and in the career aspirations page, I can define what my current position is. So I'm currently employed by, uh, by Navigator, my current uh, job title, my current level, my years of experience. And then further down, I can, um, I can, um, I can set my desires where I'm, I'm, where I'm hoping to get to. So I'd like to stay employed, be nice. And uh, my goals are advancing my career, I could change that to become a mentor or moving on to volunteering. I've, I've set my eyes on working at Google, sorry, Navigator, and then uh, I'm planning to move to Belfast, um, enough with leads. <laughs> and uh, my desired job title is that. I can set a salary if, I'm, um, if I have a um, salary in mind. My hours of work, I'd like to have some fle flexibility, so I'm open to part-time jobs or full-time jobs. I can set it to part-time and then um, my whole experience will be uh, personalized to part-time jobs. And I'm, I'm looking for a hybrid job, having some fl flexibility to work from home sometimes, uh, but I can always switch that to uh, uh, displaying office-based jobs. And this, the more I tell the system, the, the platform will just personalize my, my whole user experience around, around that. So, um, for example, if I uh, now that I've told the system what my, uh, my what what my desires are, what my aspirations are, it will it will shape the recommendations that I receive in the notification section. So I will receive recommendations for jobs, and, and uh, I will receive recommendations for content and opportunities which align with my aspirations and, and with my with my skills. And while we are while we are on this page, let's just briefly. Look at the look at the user profile. Uh, in the user profile, um, it's very um, uh, familiar user interface, similar to every other platform. And uh, the the difference is that um, so path in the pathway tab, I can see the pathways that I am I'm currently working on, I'm in progress on, and the pathways that I have completed, um, the badges that ha I have um, I have uh, received, and some of them have been revoked. Uh, so I have 14, 14 badges, and I also can um, look at the activities, um, uh, 
activities that uh, I've been, I'm attending or activities which I have already attended. Cool. So let's just um, quickly look at that um, uh, that discover page again and jump back into that um, uh, into that pathway that I started the journey with. Just looking at the time, I have about five more minutes. I should be okay with time. Cool. So with this pathway, uh, uh, continuing with the learning journey, um, 19 years old, 19 years old, Greece from uh, from Leeds, hoping to move to Belfast. I'm interested in this uh, in this technology uh, position. I'd like to start that right away. Uh, confirmation. Yes, I'm I'm happy to start that uh, pathway. So now I'm part of the journey, and as you can see, I've I've already. Um, uh, received uh, one badge uh, uh, that um, is included in this pathway, so that is already completed. So I'm I'm one step through the way, and I have eight more badges to acquire, and I can go in and uh, learn more about how I can acquire those badges. And this is the way badges appear on on Navigator. It is it's very similar to the way it appears on different badging platforms, but with 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 several nuances. Uh, so. Just scrolling down to this section. So apart from being able to see the badge metadata, I can also see how I can earn this badge. So this badge is, uh, is already part of a pathway. So I can see that uh, by completing this badge, I will I'll be put, uh, put on, a, on a journey, on a pathway towards an uh, opportunity. And there's an activity set up for this badge as well. So here we go. Uh, this activity is a workshop happening right now, this week, uh, ends on Friday. Um, uh, it's a 35 hours course. These are the skills that will acquire um, by completing this activity, and this is the badge that I will receive. Looks interesting. I'd like to learn about SQL. Let's attend that. So that automatically put, puts me in the attendees list, and then once I once I attend that, then I will receive that badge. And because I'm logged in as an admin right now, I can see the attendees of that that activity. Um, so here I go. I, I see that um, uh, Omid Mufid has uh, uh, said they will attend this activity, and uh, if once they go through the activity and once I've um, uh, received their assessments and um, I'm happy with them, then I can go ahead and just issue the badge, issue them a badge right away from here. Or I, more interestingly, I could I could issue them a badge um, the, uh, using a QR code, as you can see in here. Um, so this is the more innovative way of issuing a badge, as, as Tim mentioned earlier. Uh, but uh, we don't have time for for that that bit right now. And I'd, just, I'd like to just quickly jump back into into that pathway that I was showing. And so far, we have looked at the uh, experience as a as a learner. So let's look at how uh, let, let's look at the experience as an admin, as a content creator who creates these pathways and badges. So because I'm an admin right now, I can I can access the metadata of this pathway. Let's go in and edit that pathway. So all of the all of the common things that you'd expect in an editor: name, job, uh, end date, address, participation type, description uh, that we saw in the in the preview, and then uh, it's available to everybody: images, industry, um, and then further down the steps of of this pathway. So I can. I can remove steps. I can add more more badge options to this step, and on and on. But the interesting part in here is the innovation we have done on smart tags on and on how you tag your content. And if Jobs Feed was the star of the show, this is the supporting act. And so. We are very familiar with this concept that on, in the digital world, when you create a piece of content, when you, when you create a social media post, you think about the hashtags to put under that post to make it appear, to make it pop out in the, in the, in the marketplace. Or when you're creating an article or a blog post, you always think, think about the SEO keywords to add to that blog post. So it, that, that concept is familiar. That concept is, has been around for several years. But now we are bringing that way of approach and that way of thinking to how you create educational learning content. So this pathway uh, and it, it, that task of thinking about the keywords and thinking about the skills and tags to add to your pathway can be a daunting task. Um, and um, we, we are using technology to make that as smooth as possible. And uh, that's where, again, Lightcast uh, services come to, come to help. 
Um, um, so uh, the, we've put a, a sparkly suggestion button. So with this pathway, I have already I've already defined my description. I've already added the badge to this pathway. So the system already knows a lot about what this pathway is about. So even before I start adding any tags, I can just press suggest. And that suggests like magic. It looks at all of the methods I've, that I've put in. It queries um, Lightcast services, Lightcast API, and it brings back um, a list of skills that I can use right away. And as you can see, um, all of these, well, most of these skills are related to uh, the content that I'm creating right now. Um, but and we also added this interactive guidelines on the side. As I said, it is tricky to to know what skills to add, how many of them to add. So that's why I, we have added that interactive helper on the side to just make it as easy as possible for the admins to create this content. So I've added, I've already added more than ten tags. So I get a green tick for that. Um, at least six of them are smart tags, lightcast, skills tags. So again, I get a green tick for that. And the difference between that is when they get a spark, when they have a sparkle, they are a smart lightcast skill, and some of them don't have a sparkle. They are the normal tags. And I have added at least two specialized skills. These are the specialized skills I've added. And specialized skills are the skills that you need to do a certain a certain type of uh, job. And further down, um, it expects me to have at least two common tags. Common tags are this, the tag, this, uh, common skills. This common skills are the skills that you need to do almost any type of job, like planning, communication, teamwork, and um, all of that. So I haven't added any 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 common skills. Let's go and fix that problem. Resilience is, I think, a common skill. Let's add that in. That's good. I have one there. Problem solving, I think, is a common skill. Cool. I have a green tick on that, but let's keep going on that. Presentations, and is there another one? Can I? Uh, planning, cool. Now I'm happy with that. I have, um, I have green ticks uh, across the board, and I'm happy to publish that content. And we have we brought this, these smart tags into, uh, into all elements, all content that you create, pathways, be it pathway, pathways, badges, or activities. And there will be more in, in developments on this. Looking at time, I'm already over time, so that's all I have time to show. But if you if you've liked what you've seen so far, you can always jump onto navigator.app. You can sign up for a free learner account, or you can get in touch with us for a provider or a, a community account. Thank you very much. Handing over back to Valentin. Thanks. I'm hoping you can see my screen. We, we, we're doing this all on the fly, so please tell me if you can see a slide uh, saying questions. Um, I was just going to um, check and see whether we have had questions. Um, Debbie, are you there? Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, we have uh, a question, which is, um, do the employers listed adopted badges also or is Lightcast using its tech to filter jobs that have the same skills as those on the pathway? Does that make sense? Yeah, so do the, I, think that, I think that's asking whether the, it's about the jobs feed and it's asking whether the employers have already um, adopted badges associated with that pathway, or is it that we are filtering jobs as they have the same skills as those on the pathway and it is the latter so what we're doing is we're using our lightcast or using the lightcast skills taxonomy to match jobs to the pathway so uh, okay. i don't know if you wanted to add um to that or is that a perfectly good explanation uh ahmed yeah i think the only other thing to, to add to it is that for each of the cities um there's a lot of on the ground work doing so there's a lot of um, meeting with employers, um, asking them what the, their skills needs are, and then working collaboratively to build badges and pathways to lead to those jobs. So there's really a combination of um, using the tech and that face-to-face -face work. And I remember Andy saying something, Andy Durham saying to me something right at the beginning when we started to work together, there's probably 75% of the work which can be done by the technology and big data um, but there's that other human bit which is which is also really really critical to this in terms of uh, brokering those relationships. Yeah I completely agree with that point um, the, there are limits to what can be done with the technology and you still need 
uh, people and you need to involve those stakeholders, particularly in terms of the way you've described it, that link between the the learner or the employee, the employer and the um, learning providers as well as other stakeholders like local authority and so on, local authorities. Um, I'm going to, um, mindful of time, if there's any other questions that we need to come back to, we can come back to you um, directly on those. Um, but I did want to mention the next webinar, which is on the 4th of May. Um, this will essentially be um, a, an opportunity for us to bring in local authorities that are using digital badges to build skills insights. So we're going to hear firsthand on how this works on the ground, what the benefits are. Um, so yeah, we've done the introduction one. Um, this is the more of the um, operational practical insight of how it actually um, gets embedded within an area and what the, how that uh, positively impacts on communities. Um, the next slide is saying um, something yeah, very just worth quickly saying about the. Um, it's quite a lot of noise on there. Um, so just in terms of that webinar, we've got Southampton City Council and Belfort City Council, and both of those councils are, you know, they're experiencing, when they're talking to employers, they're experiencing lots of skills gaps, that's what employers are saying, so it's really about how they're targeting skills gaps, uh, and in Cambridge they're doing some really deep research in how, uh, well they've already done research into how educational or participation into different activities outside of work related activities can then lead to better attainment in school, and better work outcomes. So that's the area that they're really uh, researching as well. In the next webinar, we'll be focusing on a, a bit more on the statistics and the analytics where you can really prove the impact or start to prove the impact of these of these initiatives. Um, and yeah, in terms of the next slide, we'll, um, we'll share this with you guys afterwards um, as well, um, but there's a link here to, we've been working with our partners um, in Cities of Learning and also Badge Nation as well to put together um, basically an offer for you to start designing badges and pathways with Lightcast data built in. So if you're interested in getting early access to that, um, just click that link or, or visit the Navigator site um, and, and we can tell you more about that. Um, and also contact us if you're interested in the sort of community and city side um, as well. Well, um, not just to say, really, thank you for attending today, thank you for joining us, and thank you to anyone that is listening to a recording of this, which we know people do. Um, you can find um, both organisations on LinkedIn um, under Navigator. It's worth saying with Lightcast, it's no longer Lightcast UK, we have one LinkedIn account that we're using and active on, which is Lightcast. Uh, you've got email addresses there as well and websites. Um, you will get a follow-up email, um, which uh, is uh, will include details on the next uh, registration details for the next webinar, which we've already talked about. Um, and also, um, we will have um, you be able to make contact with us if you would like to find out more. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it, Tim. Are we okay? Yeah, it, it is. And, um, thank you very much, Will, uh, and the Lightcast team for, for hosting us and um, helping us get to this point. And thanks everyone who attended today. It's uh, been great to share this the information with you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, David. And um, yeah, as I said right at the start, a really good example of how you can unlock new possibilities in the labour market and I will leave it at that. Thank you all.